all of that that was wrong. Well, he never that, did man. do this, man. Yeah. Oh, I mean, he's not a runner. He, he got the gunslinger mentality. He know he got the gun. He got the gunslinger on, but he got the gunslinger mentality. I can fit this into this. I can throw it into this. I can do that. You know what I'm saying? Because I got the man is deadly accurate. I'm talking about kill shot accurate. The man is, but you know what I'm saying? It's not just he's accurate. His his ball placement, his ball placement is crazy. The accuracy of his ball placement is like anybody can be accurate, throw it to your chest. But Drew Brees, like, you can be covered. I can put it in the spot where you can make a play on it. A lot of quarterbacks ain't got that type of gift. Teddy Bridgewater didn't have that type of gift. You know what I'm saying? He had that type of gift where he can be accurate, but deadly accurate. Well, okay, Mike may be covered, got somebody over his back, but I can put the ball in front of him where he can catch it. I can put it low where he can make an adjustment. You know what I'm saying? I can throw him open. A lot of quarterbacks ain't got that talent, but Drew got that talent. Let me finish by saying this. You know, um, like I said, you know, this last season, you know, I thought that was very selfish of him not to uh, disclose his injuries. And, and let let the team know, hey, look, I can't throw the ball. I can't throw the ball deep. You know, um, I got this messed up with my shoulder. I thought that was very selfish because, I mean, this year we were supposed to go to the Super Bowl. Mike knew that. Me and Mike was Absolutely. at that game. And yeah. we knew we were very, very upset. And we were very upset because we knew we were a better team than Tampa. They we said, they said, I'm going to go by they or basically by statistics or, or Sean Payton. I know he mentioned it. That game against Tampa Bay, where we blowed them out, they say he got hurt that game. But then the following week, we played against the 49ers. I'm going to quite sure you remember, David. We played against the 49ers. Yeah. So you see how that lineman laid on him. Yeah. Okay. And I knew he was, I knew he was hurt. I knew he was hurt. Yeah. What, I'm, what I don't understand, if number nine – had the courage to say, you know what, Sean, I can't after halftime. He told him, I can't go. I can't go. Something wrong. I can't go. The man was literally out there with a collapsed lung and broken fracture. He was out there with a collapsed lung. You can literally see like he was like, like he was hyperventilating over there. Like the man was struggling to breathe. And he was like, I don't know what's wrong, Sean. Didn't even go in the tent. He stayed out there. He said, I can't go. Yeah. Huh? With, all those multitude, with all those multitude of injuries, man. He could have been like, that's it. I'm done. That, that, that's it. Let me finish. Sooner or later, you got to figure that his arm is going to gonna give out on him. He came to the Saints with a torn rotator cup already as it was. Uh, and, 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 you know, you, you kept every, you, every year you kept saying to yourself, how much more has he got? How much more has he got? I mean, Mike, so both of y'all both seen at least four years ago, we started seeing the arm declining. Little by little by little, but it wasn't until last year that it really, 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 really started becoming obvious. He, like, like Mike say, the man is deadly accurate, but yeah, you know, there's this time where you got to gun that ball in and take it like, like the Tampa Bay playoff game, that outright where he got picked off. Mm-hmm. You got to have a gun to make that throw. I don't care where you place that ball, but if you throw it out there soft like you did, that's what was going to happen. You're going to get picked off. Yeah. Yeah, so let me finish yeah. by saying this. Well, I would yeah. love Drew to be back on the coaching staff. We have mm-hmm. a position open for him. Uh, if he won't go in the box, he can go in the box. I think he'll be a good, you know, commentator. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he'll be a good coach. You know, right. I, I think it's over. I think it's time for us to move on. Um, I think it's time for us to move on um, from Drew. And we thank you, Drew. We thank you for everything you have done for us, man. Love you, bro. You love see you. this right here? You see what this man said? You wasn't winning a Super Bowl without a healthy Drew Brees. I don't care who the quarterback would have been. <laughs> well, if we would have had a, a, a Mr. James Winston in. And that's our gonna next gonna topic. We're going to get to that later. That's I ain't going to chase that right now. That's our next topic. Is Winston the future? Yes. <laughs> next, next question. Uh, we we gonna we gonna elaborate on this a little bit. Um, David, you want to start with this one? The man is the future because here's the thing. Here's the thing. The man is 27 years old. Okay, mm-hmm. he is just just getting into the prime of his career. He's had out a season, yes, but 27 right. years old. He's just getting to the prime of his career, 
And I don't care if everybody want to talk about interceptions, the 30 interceptions, 30 interceptions. Bull. That's a bunch of bull. You are one of only eight quarterbacks in the history of the NFL to throw for 5,000 yards. Not only did he do that, he was still second to lead with 33 touchdowns. I don't want to hear the bull about no doggone interception. That's some bull. The man got an arm. He's pretty much mobile. He's not Lamar Jackson mobile, but he's he's mobile enough to pick up 10, 12, 15 yards when need be. I mean, come on, man. If you throw for 5,000 yards in a season, you, you're definitely going to be thrown where you have to throw in the window. They're going to be thrown where you got to throw to people in coverage, and you got to be able to throw a perfect deep ball. You just don't throw 5,000 yards and be garbage. You just don't. The man is the future. I don't care what none of y'all haters say. The man is the future. Mike. What you got to say about that, man? Look, I know you nip all those negatives about Winston in the bud. Go ahead and tell us, Mike, why we should give Winston a shot. First of all, he would be uh, the most talented, physically talented quarterback that Sean Payton has ever worked with, for one, for the New Orleans Saints. Um, I believe in Coach Payton. Just like they took a risk and took a chance on, on, on Drew Brees, I believe they should do the same thing with Jameis Winston because the simple fact of the matter is nobody likes to bring up what Drew Brees was before he came to New Orleans. Nobody liked to do that. Nobody don't mention the numbers he had and the interceptions his ass was throwing and what he was doing with how he looked as a charger. But I got him, and I know him by heart since I've been, since I've been bringing it up so much. Since the 1% completion percentage, which is what Jameis Winston is now, 80 touchdowns and 53 interceptions. That's what Drew Brees had in five years. Now, the first year, he only played, like, part of one game. And if he was considered a quarterback of the future, why the hell they drafted Phillip Rivers when Drew Brees was over there? But nobody wants to bring that up, do you? If you believe in Coach Sean Payton like you say you do, some of you fans, some of y'all, and this man is a quarterback whisperer, because basically that you really bust your damn bubble Drew Brees wasn't, want, 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 didn't want to be his first choice. It was Tony Romo if you didn't know that part. Yeah. If you didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? So I hate to bust your bubble on that part. But he failed the physical with the Dolphins, right? And when Drew Brees... See, Sean Payton is the type of coach... I'm quite sure you know this, Soul and David. He say, watch this. That's Sean Payton. Oh, y'all think? Watch this. Watch what I do with it. Watch this. That's Sean Payton. I believe in Coach Sean Payton. And I believe that his offensive playbook was limited. I don't even think you've seen the best of him of what he could do. When you got a quarterback that can make any throw and every throw in your offense, Lord have mercy. Jameis could do that. And he's more talented than Drew Brees. I ain't gonna say I ain't gonna get him more smarter. I can't say that right now because you haven't seen what he could do. But as far as physically talented. He could do that. And everybody mentioned about the interceptions. That's one year he had 30 interceptions. When you go on the other years that he was there, keep in mind, the man had three head coaches, Lovey Smith, Dirk Cutter, and Bruce Arians. Plus, he had multiple coordinators. But nobody mentions that with a sheer-ass, trash-ass offensive line, no running game. When yeah. Tom Brady got there, when Tom Brady got there, every time it's the same team. Bullshit. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the same team. No, it was not. No, it was not. Bruce Harris may have been the same coach. Yes. But they had an Antonio Brown. They had a Leonard Fournette. They drafted Tristan Wirfs. They made adjustments on the offensive line. And not only that, they changed how they play how the playbook. Basically, did it what Tom Brady does best. They got that after that ass whooping that the Saints gave them. And then when the Rams came and whooped that ass, and Kansas City whooped that ass, and it was on the bye week, week 13, they came back a totally different team. Totally different. They started running a whole lot of screen plays. They started giving the ball, basically running back friendly, what they like to do in New England, throw the short passing game to them. Start implementing the tight end a lot more with Gronk and basically with um the other boy, the, uh, Cameron Brake. 
They start doing a whole lot of that. They start running a lot of rail routes. That's all New England do. That was all. That's all what New England do, and it became most successful. When uh, when when Jameis Winston was there, they weren't doing that. There was no biscuit, no ri- all that shit. Risking no biscuit, air raid, run and shoot. They was just talking it up and down the field. So I don't want to hear that about. Well, when Tom Brady got there, uh, they just no, they, that's bullshit. They changed the offense, cater, and Bruce Arians told you that. He told you, he said, I didn't do a damn thing. I let the coordinators coordinate, and I let Tom Brady do what he do best. Did he let Jameis Winston do what he do best? Did he change an answer there for him? No, he did not. So if you believe in Sean Payton like you say you do, and you believe he's the offensive genius that do, let's see what he can do working with somebody that got damn near 20,000 yards passing in a five-year career. Let's see what he can do, 121 touchdowns. Let's see what he can do with him. Exactly. I think it's worth a shot. Well, I'm going to say this, you know, and I, I feel the same way that these two brothers feel. You know, I feel like we should give Winston a shot. I mean, this dude, it's, it's like you getting, I mean, he's just 20, what, 26, 27 years old? 27. That's the same age Drew Brees was when he came to the Drake, 27. And, exactly. And you're getting a guy with all this experience, all this talent, Heisman Trophy winner, first round pick. You know, he won a championship, you know. I mean, why not give him a chance? He had his LASIK surgery. He then had two babies, you know, so he's more mature, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I know he had a few mistakes coming out of college, you know, with the crab right. legs. They love to, to, to mess with him and talk about crab legs and all that kind of shit, you know, and that mm-hmm. makes me upset because, you know, give the guy a clean slate, okay? He paid for that, okay? Mm-hmm. All that's over with. He's moving forward. He was a year under under uh, Sean Payton and Drew Brees. Like he said, Harvard, quarterback college for him. You know what I'm saying? He loves the right. team. Sean Payton said that this guy gave us morale. He was a leader. Sitting on the sideline with the with the clipboard. Mm-hmm. Leader for us. And, and, and look, he loved to be here. He enjoyed it. He, he didn't get an attitude when Taysom came in and, and took Brees' spot. Played those mm-hmm. games. He still was was hyping behind our team. He still was rallying behind Taysom. He did everything that we wanted him to do. So give the guy a chance, man. It, mm-hmm. it, it's Winston time, baby. Mm-hmm. I, and I heard and I heard the argument. Not to cut you off. They say, well, if he was so good, if he was this, David Robin, if he was so good. <laughs> oh, I'm name dropping. I don't do no sneak dissing, David Robin. Um, if he was so good, you know what I'm saying, when he got released, John Forcade, if he was so good, why nobody um tried to sign him before the Saints got to him? Actually, sir, there were three teams in contention to sign Jameis Winston. One was the Chargers, the other one was Pittsburgh Steelers, and the other one was the Washington football team, if you didn't fucking know that. He took a pay cut because he believed in what Sean Payton told him, that he would have an opportunity. So you would have an opportunity because Sean Payton believed that uh, this was Drew Brees last year. He said, you will have an opportunity to compete with Taysom Hill. I'm going to go ahead and say that for all the Taysom Hill apologists. He had an opportunity to compete for the basically the role as the guy, you know what I'm saying, for that position once Drew Brees leave. You know what I'm saying? The man took a tremendous pay cut. Yeah. So, yes, he did have other suitors he could have went to. You see that now. The man ain't played probably about 3% of the goddamn season. And guess what? You already got people talking about Chicago trying to give him a contract. You already got other people talking about teams right now. If he wasn't, if he wasn't considered a, a, a suitable guy, he didn't even play basically last year. Came in for a few snaps against, uh what, the 49ers and whatnot. And that was about it. And came in, you know, like for that little short stint. Throw that beautiful, beautiful pass, beautiful pass against Tampa Bay. It, it was beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, basically his agent uh, was 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 uh, messing up. He, he didn't do the right thing. He fired his agent. Oh, he got man. rid of him. You know, right. that's you know right there, man. You know, so he had suitors. I don't it, know it, where they get a twist that he didn't. What you got, David? And let me yeah. add on to that. You know, and, and we're gonna probably talk about the quarterback competition between. Uh, Winston and Hill uh, when the season starts. 
But but just look at the dynamic offense the Saints have. You got an MVP type running back and Alvin Kamara who can run and catch. Okay, you got an well, all well, receiver and, and, and Michael Thomas. Okay, you got well, Steve Burns and Deontay Harris. Right? And arguably, arguably, you really must got pretty much got the best offensive line in football. Talk now, about it. Now, let me refer to one play. Two plays. The Taysom Hill play at, against Chicago in the playoffs. Okay. Now, we've all been on the basketball court. A lot of people in the audience have probably been on the basketball court before. They've heard this expression. Have you ever heard this expression called self-check? franchise quarterback i mean we we love him you know he's helped us he's did some a uh, fantastic uh exciting things you know uh, but, but uh, here's the thing though so here's the thing he did some exciting thing but he led the league and he was a tie for the a tie for the league lead and fumbles uh, you know the other three were lamar jackson uh the quarterback from the giants i forget his name and uh, another quarterback. All of those three other ones are four-time starters. They get 25 to 30 snaps, uh, pass attempts a game. Okay, you can understand 11 fumble. This man was a part-time starter. He only started three games. He still was up there in the, in the, in, at one of the league leaguers in fumbles. All right. We're going to leave Taysom alone, and we're going to move another topic. Uh, Baltimore. Okay. Oh Lord! Is releasing um, Mark Ingram. Uh, they mm -hmm. have have they have they released him yet, uh, Mike? Do we uh, want Ingram back in New Orleans? That's a good question. 
Uh, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with Mike. How you feel about that? Oh, go with David. 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 I gotta hear. I gotta hear why. Cause I, I, you ever told me why? Hey, I never hey, hey, know why. No, I gotta hear David. <laughs> David said why? Let me elaborate. One thing David wants to know. Mike, elaborate on that. Then I'll finish. Go ahead, Dave. I am biased because the man went to Alabama. Okay. I had a thing about Alabama players. They they look like beauty queens in college, but when they get to the NFL, they look like crackheads. Right. I mean that he went to Alabama. Okay, everybody know Alabama cheats. Of course them boys gonna look good in college because they got the whole SEC referees in their back pocket, the offensive line get away with holding, the offensive, the uh, wide receiver get away with offensive pass interference, the DB and Jay Willem pass interference, Mark Ingram had a hole, a hole was open because the offensive line was holding. I'm going to tell you something here. Let me, let me just take down my camera right quick. The man went to Alabama. That's enough saying right there. But if you want to hear some... There you go. You want to hear the truth. There you go. The he, was the man. he was the man in New Orleans for five years. He didn't even break a thousand yards. He didn't even break a thousand yards. His best year as a saint was 1,100 yards rushing. And it wasn't even the top ten. Okay, Mike. What you got? I, I hope he do return, but probably as a third third running back. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I like I, I have a philosophy. I don't like tall running backs. I don't. I don't like running backs that's over six two. I don't. You know what I'm saying? Especially what Sean Payton requires you to do in his offense. You know what I'm saying? He likes he likes all purpose backs. He likes running backs that run between the tackles. He likes running backs that can run outside. He likes running backs that can run routes and catch balls and stuff like that. You usually don't get that. Out of tall running back, six three running back. I'll tell you, remember six three. But for what he's been used for, what he's been doing with the Saints as a power back, you know what I'm saying? He fits that role. He's doing a great job. I got to give it to him credit. The Tavis Murray as the second back had over 600 yards rushing. You know what I'm saying? In some cases, in some games, they didn't give him the ball enough. But exactly. when I look at when I look at Mark. You know what I'm saying? Maybe from a historical standpoint that he only need like less than 80 yards to be the all-time leading rusher. You know, but the simple fact of the matter is the chemistry between him and Alvin Kamara that they had together, right. bro. Like, right. man, it's just like you could, you, they was, they were special together. They really were. They were really, really special together. And they was like probably one of the first tandems, you know what I'm saying? To go on the Pro Bowl together, them two, and they, they was real special. I know that's probably not what they are now, but I think, honestly, Ingram got more in the tank. I don't think he's, he's dead in the water. He's not a running back that basically throughout his career had 300 touches, you know, a season, like like, like all these big-time backs. All that shit you see from Derrick Henry, all that shit you see like from Ezekiel and all them, them 300-plus touches every year, you see what it did to Christian McCaffrey, didn't you? When you get a, when you get a bulk of carries like that, on consecutive basis, year after year, it's going to weigh you down. I don't think he necessarily was that type of running back that had that type of workload throughout his career. So I still think he got something left in the tank. I just think with the chemistry, the leadership, and what he brings to the table as a teammate that will help the locker room and stuff like that, I think that's warranted, man, what they need, man. I think that's warranted. I agree. I agree with what you said, um, Mike. You know, uh, he helped Kamara mature, you know, a lot. You know, they were one, two punch. He was like his big brother. He was big brother. He was little brother, like Shaq and Kobe. Wow. You know? And um, them two were, di were dynamic. I remember Deion Sanders used to have um, prime time. 21, he used to call him up. He said, you're going to call prime if you do good. Now, them guys was on there at least five, six times a season, you know. And um, they did good together. They, they complimented each other well, thunder and lightning. And um, I would love to see that again. I would love to see Mark come back because I don't think he took too much uh, wear and tear over there in Baltimore. You know, mm -hmm. they just had some young, young, young backs, and Baltimore wanted to go with those young backs. That's their future. You know, I mean, you, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Dobbins and um, and Edwards, man. I mean, they're young cats, faster. You know, mm -hmm. but I still think 
Ingram could come back here and um and help us. You so you saying third back? You saying keep Latavius and put him behind Latavius? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. If we don't keep Latavius, then he's the number two. Well, Latavius still got I think two years left on his contract. Right. I think he got two more years left on his contract. You know what right. I'm saying? Even like I said, I may have a personal stance on I don't like tall running backs. Right. I don't, I don't like them. I really don't. I don't like well, tall running backs because they're limited. They're well. predict, they predictable. But he, 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 he been, he been doing such a good job. You know what I'm saying? I like to keep Latavius. I really would. I like to keep. Him. I like to keep. Him. He not, he don't cause as much. You know what I'm saying? Even though he's quiet, he's basically to himself, but he do his job. You know what I'm saying? He do his job and he do it well. Look, look, look at that. 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 Look I'm hoping it don't happen. Lord forbid that Alvin Kamara gets hurt for three or four games. Okay. Can Mark Ingram carry the same load that that, that Alvin Kamara carries? Well, it's going to be Latavius Murray because he's going to be number two. So why even bring the man in? We can have capable. We already have capable running backs. That, when, when the but whole, the, but the, when the game where the, where the whole uh, running back, uh, all of our running backs had to stay out with COVID, you see how that running game still went strong? The thing, the thing about Latavius Murray is he's a north and south runner. He ain't no east and west type of guy. He, uh, he Mark Ingram isn't either. He, no, he, Mark Ingram is a Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram does not have. He does not have dynamic speed, but he's a one cut back. You know right. what I'm saying? Like if you don't see the hill, he can cut. That's Mark Ingram. Latavius Murray ain't that. No, he is what it is. North and south. Murray, and, Murray. He don't, and, and, and Mark Ingram, Mark Ingram is a better receiver out of the backfield. Now he's not Alvin Kamara, but he can catch out of the backfield. You can get your flat passes, arrow routes, and stuff like that. You can do that. You got a bias toward Alabama. Say yeah, it. I do, they say got it. it. They say got it. Me. Say, say it, damn it. Say it. Mark Ingram is the damn truth and shine the damn devil. They you they don't like Mark Ingram Bell. is a below <laughs> average running back. <laughs> If we had right. an opportunity to get Najee Harris, you would say, hell no. I Look sure you. would. And you see that? That is. That is. That is right there. No, that that is. The thing is, we don't need no running back. We don't need. I'm just saying. Need, uh, I'm just saying. All right. How about, how about Devontae Smith? At the okay, same time, I'm talking about Devontae Smith. Now, here's the thing about Devontae. Devontae is an exception, okay? Because he pretty much, <laughs> he pretty much killed LSU by himself. <laughs> He's an exception. Okay. He, he he just a whole lot. He's I tell exception. you what. I tell you what. I got a question for him. Hold, hold that soul. Uh, Devontae Smith won the Heisman, right? Okay. Jamal Chase ain't play all year. Okay. If you had an opportunity to take Jamal Chase or Devontae Smith, who you taking? Well, the thing is, if you compare them head to head, would you have to go back to the 2019 season? I don't know. It's a toss up. I think Devontae probably has more speed, but I think Jamar is the the more dynamic run, uh, wide receiver. You still have to think about that. Yeah, I had to think about it. You trying to sit here and tell me that Devontae Smith? That's right, son. 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 I'm trying to make that comparison. <laughs> Daddy was right there, so Daddy was right there. What'd you say, Mike? What'd you say, Mike? Oh, the what? But going back to Mark Ingram, but going back to Mark Ingram, we do not need Mark Ingram. We do not need Mark Ingram. Jamal Chase, without even, without even hesitating, <laughs> Jamal Chase, best year at LSU as a sophomore, I'll do Devontae Smith's whole entire career. Go look at the numbers. Exactly. Jamar Chase is bigger. I don't know if he's faster, but he's bigger. I'm concerned about Devontae 6'1, 175. Jamar is a grown ass man. He's 6'1 by 200 plus. He's a grown ass man. Okay. And I don't know if you know, they hit in the NFL. They hit. Okay. All right. 
I'll make a even compare. I'll make a fair comparison for you. And it's really not even fair because they were both. It was in two different classifications. But you think about Devontae Smith and the level of competition he went up against. Take away LSU, okay? Take away LSU. You look at the level of competition Devontae Smith went up against. He did not go up against the same corners that Jamar Chase went up against at Alabama. You don't know why? Because okay. he didn't play Georgia but one time. That's okay. Right. He only played Georgia. No, he played Georgia twice. Excuse me. Ain't nobody, okay. ain't no team in the eastern side of the SEC got the corners like they had in the western side. Then plus Jamar Chase pretty much dominated Georgia. He oh, dominated he Clemson. He dominated Oklahoma. Okay. And then he had two other wide receivers that they had to share the ball to. Devontae, Devontae's senior year, his, his last year, he was, the, he was the only person even worked on the ball to. Okay? I know what he's got here. But Devontae numbers, Devontae numbers were, first of all, great because he was the only go-to receiver they had. Second of all, he didn't, they, it was a shortened season, and Bama really didn't play against a good competition. Now, if you want to talk about numbers, yes, Devontae does have a better season, better number. Uh, uh, so head, to head, head to head when you look on the field, head to head when you look on the field, I would take Jamar Chase anytime because Jamar Chase is a mismatch in the end zone. He's a mismatch on the 50-50 ball. He can run around just as good as Devontae, and he might be a step slower. But give me Jamar Chase because I know at least Jamar Chase got great coaching, whereas in Alabama, they got great referees. You 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 gotta stop. You gotta stop, man. You you, you got to stop, bro. You look at the history of Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> when you take away Dan and Julio Jones, you got a whole bunch of dead Alabama players that don't even pretty much start. They ain't doing nothing. That's okay. Ain't probable. Ain't doing nothing. Look, I don't want to hear about Alabama. Let me tell you something about Alabama players. Alabama players are cooking. 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 Alabama players are with, with the pretty eyes and the pretty face oh, and the long hair yeah. and the long hair <laughs> that's Alabama players they call it. But you know when you get that woman, when you take her home and she take that makeup off, her yeah. eyebrows come off, she take that wig off, she's bald headed, she take that waist hair off, and then oh, it goes to look like a, a, a gallon jug, milk jug. That's Alabama players. <laughs> well, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. We know one thing. David do not like Alabama. So. David hates Alabama. I see that now. I, hey, I don't even like to drive to the freaking gun. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, we over an hour and 20. We're going to go over our next uh, topic, and then we're going to cut it down, y'all. Uh, All right. 2021 draft needs. 2021 draft needs. I, uh Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Uh, we'll start with you, no filter on that. Uh, well, you look at the, you look at the first thing with, with, as far as losses. Now, I do believe that somewhere along the line we're gonna draft a quarterback. But I say my first, I think corner. First is corner. Uh, you're gonna lose P.J. Williams. It's question marks about Janoris Jenkins. Patrick Robinson is gone. So that means you got Marshawn Lattimore, Keith Washington, and a whole bunch of people. We have no idea who they are. I don't know if Ken Crowley going to be back. So I say first priority, you want to pair somebody up with Marshawn Lattimore because the simple fact of the matter is that everybody talk about Patrick Peterson and all that. You don't know how much Patrick Peterson going to cost you, and plus you limit it when it comes to your cap. So... I would say the first priority, and cornerback is a very, I don't know if you, a lot of people don't know this, but cornerbacks get paid a significant amount of money. So I like J.C. Horn, man, out of South Carolina, bro. That's Joe Horn's son. And I'm not just saying that because he, um, Joe Horn's son. He, yeah, used to play there, but I like him. I think he'll be there. And plus, I think the simple fact of the matter, I like his measurables. He's 6'1", about 205. Uh, he's physical. Um, and plus, he got experience.